Cary, North Carolina, specifically the Wake Med Soccer Park, which is the host site for the ACC Women's Soccer Semifinals. Tonight, number one ranked Virginia will face Clemson. And then coming up later this evening after this first semifinal, the Tar Heels of North Carolina will face Florida State in the second semifinal. And once again, good evening, everyone. Sam Gore, honored to be alongside Cat Whitehill, a former national champion at North Carolina and Olympic gold medalist. Cat, four teams are here this weekend and carry all four ranked in the nation's top ten. Well, the ACC is without a doubt the best conference in women's soccer. Florida State, the defending national champion, and Virginia played them in the national championship last year, and they're back for the ACC semifinals. And then, of course, North Carolina and Clemson. You can't have a better field than this. Well, if Clemson wants to win tonight, obviously the play of Sheridan should be a big factor. Well, she's been key for them all season. She's first team all ACC. And what really makes her special is how good she is with her feet. She helps Clemson play well out of the back. And for Virginia, one of my favorite players to watch, and really everyone's favorite player, Mackenzie Donia. Well, and she's such a special player. She's a U-20 national team player. And she's just so agile for her size. She's fast, and she just has a special nose for the goal. And the key tonight is for her to combine well with this player and Alexis Schaffer, who's the leading goal scorer for Virginia, but she plays attacking mid, along with Morgan Ruther. Those three are going to have to play really well against a very tough Clemson defense. So it will be Clemson trying to pull off the upset in the first semifinal here in Cary. Clemson and Virginia to kick off the ACC Women's Soccer Semis in a moment. Virginia and Clemson just moments away from kicking off here in this ACC Women's Soccer Semifinal. Virginia ranked number one in the nation. You can see uh, head coach Steve Swanson in there with his team getting ready, trying to get them ready to face Clemson. Clemson will be the underdog in this first game. A couple of their stars. As we take a look at the series history between them, Virginia's actually won seven straight against Clemson, so that doesn't bode well for the Tigers tonight. But a clean slate as it's win and advance or lose or go home. There's Eddie Redwanski, the head coach for the Clemson Tigers in his fifth season. And as I just mentioned, the very familiar Steve Swanson. Swanson, the ACC Coach of the Year, leading the Virginia Cavaliers to the number one ranking and hoping to win another national championship. What do you think of this Virginia team, Kat? What a special team. They lost a lot of really good players, and Morgan Bryan and Daniel Colaprico in the midfield. Morgan Bryan played for the U.S. national team, but they just haven't seemed to skip a beat without them. They filled in very nicely with young players like Betsy Brandon in the midfield, and Alexa Schaffer has really stepped up well for this Virginia team. Well, this will be the first of two semifinals tonight as we get ready to kick off here in Cary, North Carolina. Beautiful night. Field looks absolutely perfect, pristine out here. And we're underway. Well, there was a nice little rain right before this, so it's going to make the field nice and slick. So keeping the ball on the ground, which both these teams like to do, that would be good key for these teams. Clemson in orange and Virginia in white. What do you think some of the keys are to this game, Kat? for both teams? Well, Virginia, they're all about possession. They love to keep the ball. They force you to step out of your comfort zone, and then they find those holes that you leave. So they need to maintain doing that. And for Clemson, they have to make the most of every opportunity they get when they win the ball in that possession, because you just don't get a lot of opportunities on the ball with how good Virginia is in possession. When Clemson does get the ball, they need to make sure that they take the right shots and they see key opportunities to go forward and when to, when to hold back. Two forty-five and it has clock will count down. Not 
too much here early in the first couple of minutes of play. Do you expect a lot of goals out of these two or not? Well, I mean, Virginia, they have some amazing goal scorers, but because of the defense of Clemson, I, I don't expect a lot of goals. I mean, as I say that, it'll probably be a 5-4 game, who knows, but you know, these, these are very well-disciplined teams, well-coached teams, and they're all very organized. Offsides on Virginia. Virginia. Uh, Sheridan sending it forward. First foul of the game. So possession will go to Virginia. big factor Offside. for Clemson. Virginia. As you see now, two offsides for Virginia is De Pasquale is getting the start at defender because Claire Wagner, one of their key starting center backs, went down in their game against Syracuse. They said a torn ACL, so she's out for the season, and that is a big loss for Clemson. She was third team all ACC. She's, a, she's even a playmaker out of center back, but the biggest key is she's a leader. So De Pasquale is gonna have to fit in well there with Staub in the middle. When I talked to Redwanski, Coach Redwanski of Clemson earlier, he talked very highly of his center back. So De Pasquale has a lot on her plate today just to really get back into things and get and meld well with this back four. Yeah, it's a big loss for the Tigers. Virginia trying to score first here, at least get a good shot on goal. And the first shot is blocked. As Ruther took the shot, Sheridan was all over it. Well, it was a poor pass back, and Ruther has an excellent opportunity to try and get it on frame, but she completely gives it right to Sheridan. And as I just talked about De Pasquale, it looks like now Weston, Jenna Weston, number 20 of Clemson, is now a center back. And De Pasquale is going to play up front. So a lot of changes going on for Clemson. Weston, she played forward for them all season, but she was a converted defender. So she's having to go back to her natural position. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how Clemson responds. And uh, there's Wagner on the sideline. And these lineup changes, Kat, I mean, that, that is really disruptive this time of year, isn't it? More so than earlier in the season? It really is, because especially with your back four, it takes a lot of time to get to know each other, to, to form that chemistry, that bond that each each you know player has in that back line. And to have a player that is a leader back there, that is just a critical loss for this Clemson team. And you just hate it at such a late time because she's not gonna be able to come back. And you know, the ACC tournament has started and Clemson's finally back in the ACC tournament. They have national championship hopes. So a lot on the line right now for Clemson. But the good news is Weston has played back there. And so she's, she's ready to take it on. First time Clemson's been in the tournament since 2007. You can see that ball take off and it hits this wet field, just skids through the field. Clemson coaching staff look pretty calm so far. Clemson winning 13 regular season games, uh, most for that program since 2002. It's a good year for Clemson sports, fall sports with the football team, wow. Big game tomorrow. Clemson still has not taken a shot yet, the only shot of the game taken by Virginia's Ruther. But that was good combination play out there on that left side. Clemson really likes to get their outside backs for the Bayorth twins. They're both right and left back. Combination play to get Emily Ford. Clemson looking for the scoring opportunity here. 
Good work by the Virginia defenders to clear it. Just look at Emily Sonnen. I know awesome. you really like awesome. her, Kat. Well, she is a special player. Coach uh, Steve Swanson said that she's the best center back in the country. And that's high praise coming from he, a national team head coach. He's coached the U20s to a World Cup. He was on the U.S. staff when they won the World Cup this past summer. And Sonnet just got her first cap this past week for the U.S. So high hopes for her in the red, white, and blue. Anything you can point out that makes her so good, like why he would say that? Well, she reads the game extremely well. She just anticipates where the pass is going to be. She's fast, she's athletic, but she doesn't allow anything to really get behind her. She just makes it look very easy. She plays the ball well out of the back, simple, but she completes her passes. Torres down in the corner, double teamed. And we should have our first set piece here of the night. It'll be a corner kick for Virginia. And you see uh, everyone still a long way from catching North Carolina in terms of ACC championships. The Tar Heels will be going for number 21 this weekend. They'll play Florida State next. Virginia still with a chance here. Not anymore. Sonnet. Another offsides on Virginia. Well, they just need to see the line. So a bit of a lack of discipline, especially when Clemson had stepped up. They, had, they were holding their line, yet Schaffer was still offside. She needs to know where the line is. She, she knew that Sonnen wanted to play her the ball, and yet she stayed in that offside position. Just need to be have better awareness, awareness up front. Yeah, the Virginia defense has been very good so far here in the first 10 minutes of play. Well, Kristen McNabb, the player on the ball right there, she's kind of the unsung hero of this back line. When Sonnet was gone with the national team, she stepped up when they had to play Florida State. And when they won, they beat Florida State 1-0, didn't allow Florida State any goals. And she's just the leader in the back line. And just her and Sonnet, that pairing together, is gonna be a main reason why Virginia gets into the NCAA tournament. And from what it looks like to me, I would predict them to win the NCAA championship. That's how good they've been this year. Wow. Virginia controlling the field of play. Well, this is where they get you. They're so patient and they're attacking third. That's why Clemson has to be smart when they get the ball. Be a corner kick for Virginia, the second. Corner kick, Virginia, number eight, Alexis Shaffer. Shaffer will send it. to grab it and just share it in. Who could give Virginia some problems, do you think, outside of Clemson tonight? And then to a tournament? Yeah. Well, I think Florida State, you can't deny it. I mean, Florida State lost to them 1-0, and it was on a controversial penalty kick call. They played with 10 women for about 60, 75 minutes of that game, and they never gave up another goal. So that just shows you how strong they are as well. And Florida State didn't have their international players, so it could be a rematch of the national championship game again this year. So they're they're the team to really watch out for. We'll see Florida State next. Winners will move on to Sunday's championship. They have the day off tomorrow. Yeah, 
Sends it in the middle to Brandon. The double team there by Clemson. That's where, that's where Clemson has to focus. They finally get the ball and then they clear it right back to Virginia. Now Virginia is trying to go back to goal. Sheridan jumps up and grabs that. Clemson still hasn't taken a shot of any kind. Well, they're not getting, they're not getting enough players forward right there. Two back. Yeah, you have five Virginia players and then you have Dave Pasquale and Abby Jones are the only two players in the attack. I like the combination play, but maybe next time Jones holds the ball a little bit longer, De Pasquale holds the ball, that way you get a Tonda and Horgan and Record up there with you. interesting when I talked to coach Redwanski he said they're basically in a 4-1-4-1 well right now it looks like basically a 5-4-1 it's they are dropping so low yeah. into their defensive shape they're and yet they're still not pressuring Virginia at any spot on the field so Virginia is able to turn quite easily the problem with Virginia is their final ball isn't on yet but Clemson cannot play this way for the whole 90 minutes well, that was Torres who last touched it for Virginia Sheridan running up the field, getting a little pressure now. It's Torres again. We talked about Doniak in the open. Yeah, she hasn't really been able to. Well, get she's to been involved dealing yet. with some injuries, and one thing they've really tried to get her back into that field because as a forward it's so difficult to to find the goal and, and keep scoring she was scoring so early and so often in the beginning of the season and now they're trying to get that back with her and if they can get her going then they're going to be extremely hard to beat this could be trouble be a virginia throw in Clemson gonna make a substitution. Substitution for Clemson. Anastasio is gonna come in and leaving the game is De Pasquale. And I wonder if they'll play that position by platoon tonight with Wagner out. Yeah, the, the, it, it's looking that way. I mean, and De Pasquale, you know, did, a, did an okay job, but just didn't hold the ball up well enough for Clemson. They need, that's what they need right now because they have basically played over 15 minutes of defense. They, have, they haven't had really anything in front of the goal. better there though from Clemson they finally had numbers for they had four worn shirts in and around the 18 yard box they just they weren't able to complete much with it but that's better that's enc encouraging encouraging sign for Clemson so coach Wodronski uh, up off his seat now he's standing on that Clemson sideline out of bounds by McNabb. Yeah. 
Would a loss to Clemson hurt Virginia in terms of NCAA seeding, Kat? No, I think they go in as number one. I mean, you lose to a top 10 team tonight and they'd already beaten Florida State. They have other, they've already beaten Clemson this year. They have a lot of victories and their RPI is so strong. The only way that it would hurt them is if if Florida goes in and wins the SEC tournament and just barely takes away a number one spot. But oh, I, I just think that Virginia would get one along with Florida. It'd just be, I'd be shocked if they didn't get a number one seed. First foul on Virginia. Clemson looking for that first shot of the night. Good defense. Tunda. How about for Clemson beating Virginia? What would that do for the Tigers? Well, it'd be interesting. You know, I mean, they are top 10. I think it'd be, you know, they would have to really win the whole ACC tournament for them to get a number one seed. And still then, I don't know if they would. Um, you know, they have... They've had a tough schedule, but it's it's not like Virginia, the Florida States, and it'd be tough to overtake the two of them. How much does the seeding help you, Kat? What's well, huge top top. for home field advantage, because if you're number one seed, you get home field advantage throughout the whole tournament until the College Cup. So Tonda again looking for that shot. And I like that. Katrina Tonda, she's an excellent, excellently Lemon. technical Katrina player. Tonda. She's she's fast and she's smart with the ball. And if they if she can find those pockets between the outside back of Virginia and the center back, she could be very dangerous. She just should have taken the ball down and gotten a better look. Second foul on Virginia. Foul. Virginia. Let's see a Sprouse. See this foul. That's an interesting call from the referee. Yeah, not much there. Stearns runs over and grabs that. Stearns a lefty. She's really come back strong for Virginia. She had injury during the spring that she had to deal with, a little hip surgery, and they've had to kind of bring her back, get game fit. And she's really starting to come on strong for this Virginia team, which when you're peaking like Virginia is, and it, like I said, if you get Stearns playing well, Doniak scoring, this, the way that this team plays and how good their defense is, they are just so dangerous. Another foul, uh, Virginia's starting to get very active back there. Three now, and they've all come within the last five minutes. <laughs> Officials are calling it tight. Virginia on the move again. Schaffer. Anything surprising you in this first half of the first half, Kat? No, it's, it's about right. Virginia has most of the possession, and Clemson's finally getting into the attacking third. Now they just need to make the most of those opportunities. And Coach Radwanski talked about it, how important it was when they got in those positions to make the most of them, not just to shoot to shoot. It seems like they've just been a little bit panicky in the attacking third. They just need to calm down, look up and, and see who's open and, and the better spaces in behind 
the Virginia back four. It's been Mab bringing it up. Mab again. <laughs> With how deep Clemson is dropping, Virginia needs to start playing it a bit quicker. They're taking a couple extra touches on the ball. They're dribbling into the defender, and it's closing the space. It's making Clemson's life a little bit easier. Just play one and two touch soccer. Get on the ball, play the ball, make the defense move a little bit more. Sheridan has to come up and scoop that up. How easy is it to recognize that though, Kat? Very easy. I mean. Doniak and Ruth are up front are probably very frustrated because they have about five to six defenders around them. So they need to be screaming at their team to play it faster, play it into feet, combine more between Ruther and Doniak and Chaffer, find Ratcliffe and Torres on the wings, get, try and get around their back line. That's just what they need to do. Just, it's just a little bit quicker. Just that extra touch is really hurting them in the attack. Just over 22 minutes left in this opening half. We're still scoreless here in this first semifinal. Virginia has had the better opportunities. Here's another one. Clemson denies. Fans appreciating that effort. There by Sonnet. Cool, breezy, humid night here in Cary. Flags flying straight out right now, but it's not cold. Had some rain prior to play tonight. Very different from your typical ACC tournament. Normally we're freezing up here. Yeah. And tonight we're hot and just so humid. Doesn't really feel like you're getting into championship soccer weather. Substitution for Virginia. Entering is number six, Courtney Peterson. Peterson coming in. 15. Jordano coming out. Let's go in and Substitution also out. for Virginia, number Ruther 12. had a shot earlier in Veronica the Lasko first half. number 18, Morgan Ruther. No score here in Cary. I mean, it's a pretty even match, regardless of how many corner kicks and the shots, but Clemson, they, they, they've also had their opportunity. They knew that Virginia was gonna have most of the possession. Now that they're finding their players a little bit more in the attack, even though they haven't really in the last few minutes. But the second half will be very interesting now that Clemson's starting to find their rhythm a bit more and they're getting a feel of this game, so. With all the opportunities that were missed in this half, now it's all about execution in the second half. Two of uh, Clemson's shots were shots on goal. Two of their three total shots, whereas for Virginia, they've had seven shots. Only one was on goal. Thirty seconds to play in the half. Clemson looking to make a push here. It'll be a Virginia throw in. Eleven seconds left in the half. Peterson throws it down the sideline. A, a do. Four, three, two, one, zero. 
And that'll do it. So we are scoreless at the conclusion of the first 45 minutes of play. Virginia Cavaliers, zero. Ten total shots in the half. Three taken by Clemson, seven by Virginia. We are scoreless here at halftime in Cary. Semifinal number one in the ACC Women's Soccer Tournament. I know it's a nice first half of soccer. Balls on the ground, a little bit of direct. They varied their attack. Playing out of the back, playing, playing wide. Just a little bit more combination in the attack and, and better execution. That's what they, both these teams need in the second half. Uh, Virginia head coach Steve Swanson joining us now. Uh, coach, uh, any tactical changes you're planning on making here at halftime? Uh, not really. I think, uh, you know, pretty sloppy on our part in the first half. I thought we turned the ball over quite a bit when we didn't have to. A little bit impatient and uh, kind of trying to jam it in where there, there was a lot of space. So I think uh, actually we got our best chances in transition. Um, but uh, we should, should be a little bit sharper in the attacking end. Well, how are you handling how deep, how, how will you handle how deep Clemson is dropping? Well, I mean, we we. The first time we played them, it was similar, you know, and we, we did a better job than we did tonight of switching the point, uh, trying to get numbers a little, little bit more around the flank. But we just, you know, like I said, we, we just uh, turned the ball over a little too easily for my liking, uh, playing in areas maybe we shouldn't. It's really congested and just, you know, once once we do that, we're trying to get in our attacking shape. We, we're vulnerable defensively and they're good enough. You know, they, they, they're very good in possession, you know, so they've made us work a little bit. Well, thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you, guys. Virginia head coach Steve Swanson as we're scoreless here at halftime between Virginia and Clemson. And we'll return to Cary in the Wake Med Soccer Park where Virginia and Clemson. Halftime here in Cary, North Carolina, Clemson and Virginia are scoreless. These fans are getting an entertaining first half. Ten shots were taken, but only three on goal. We have a very special guest up here with us at halftime. Is uh, you never know who's going to drop by the booth. A lot of these young soccer fans, I'm sure, will recognize who's with us. Cat, introduce Morgan for us. Oh wow! Well, one of Virginia's greatest soccer players <laughs> ever, and Morgan Bryant. She was also on the U.S. national team, two-time Matt Kerman Trophy Award winner, and uh, she's basically the difference for the U.S. this past summer. So. She's Thank a pretty you. decent player. I appreciate that. <laughs> so what did you think about Virginia in the first half? I thought it was a good game. I thought, you know, Clemson and towards the end had a little bit more of the ball. And I think for us in the beginning, we had more of the ball. So it was a good game. And you saw a lot of uh, attacking on both sides. And I think, you know, it's going to be one goal or two goals going to be the difference today. How much do you miss playing in the ACC tournament? <laughs> I miss it so much. This field is so great. And I think one of our doctors was just asking, it's so hard for me to not be on the field right there. And it's, it's just right in front of me. And I can't, it's just weird being there and not playing on the field with the girls, especially a lot of them that I've, I've played with at Virginia. Uh, Morgan, uh, give us a little update on what you're up to these days. So I'm actually at Virginia taking classes and I'm trying to finish my degree uh, probably in the next year or so. Eventually I'll finish it. Uh, but right now we have a break with the national team. So it's been nice to relax and I actually just finished my running today and have two weeks off vacation and I can't remember the last time I've had two weeks off. So tell us about this summer. How special was that for you and, and being the youngest player on the U.S. team? It was so special. I, it was something that I'll remember for the rest of my life and it's something that doesn't happen very often and uh, it's such a hard thing to do too and for us it was great to be there and I've, we've all come back and we've seen the impact we had on the United States and obviously women's sports in general and so for me as a young player it's been awesome to really be a part of something like that and to experience something like that. Well, being a part of that, was anything unexpected that you can tell us that, that maybe you weren't prepared for when you went into it? 
I don't think there was anything I wasn't prepared for. I think actually being on the team and seeing how much, because I played on the under 20 Women's World Cup team and we won and I think when we came back to Virginia, no one knew we won. <laughs> and so <laughs> when we came back and it's, it's such a different level of media and attention and everyone knows exactly what's going on and that's only the biggest difference I think I experienced was just the, the matter of how many people were watching and, and tuned in to the World Cup. Well, there's a lot of players that are retiring and you're going to be the person to really step in. What was it like playing with those players like Abby Wambach and Lauren Holiday and Shannon Box and Lori Clutney? Yeah, I was so blessed to be able to play with them. They're such experienced players and really legends of the game. And so for me to be able to be there at the age of 22 and really play with someone like Lauren Holiday, Shannon Box in the center of midfield is only going to help me in the future. And obviously Abby's such a great leader. So to take leadership qualities from them is something that will help me in the long run. Well, in an unbiased Unbiased opinion, what do you think is going to happen in the second half and in the rest of Virginia season? Unbiased opinion, that's hard. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to go with Virginia. I always got to go with Virginia. I think uh, hopefully we get a goal and a set piece. We've had a lot in the past 20 minutes. And um, obviously, uh, I think we're going to keep a little more possession if Steve Swanson's talking to him in the halftime right now in the locker room. But um, I'm, I'm going for the Who's. Hopefully right. win a national championship this well, year. Thanks, Morgan. Uh, we'll let you go continue to enjoy your couple of weeks off. Get some Thank rest you. and Thank you. have fun. Sounds now, good. You never know who's going to stop by the booth here in the ACC, the premier women's soccer conference in the country. We're scoreless at halftime here in Cary. Well, back here in Cary, North Carolina, it's halftime between Virginia and Clemson. We've got about six and a half minutes left here in the break. Scoreless after the first 45 minutes of play. This is always a big week because the unveiling of the individual awards occurs, and we're seeing some of those stars tonight in this first game. Uh, Doniak Cat, the Offensive Player of the Year. Sonnet, you've already mentioned, Defensive Player of the Year, and we'll see the midfielder and freshman of the year from Florida State coming up later tonight. Well, it's basically an all-Virginia award set, except for Megan Connolly. Steve Swanson also won Coach of the Year, so, you know, Virginia is just proving that they just keep, you know, making their team great. Coach Swanson, he's one of the best coaches in the world, in my opinion. I mean, when you're, coach, you know, an assistant coach for the U.S. national team and U-20 World Cup champs, he just, his style of soccer is so pretty. I love how he was with the interview. He didn't like how they were playing, and yet, you know, they still played well. They still had opportunities, but he's such a perfectionist, and, you know, he deserves to be the Women's Coach of the Year. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how Virginia comes out to approach this second half. We're about five minutes away from starting this second half, but we'll return with more of our halftime. A uh, beautiful night for soccer here at the Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina, where we are scoreless at halftime. And looking forward to our second half of play. Hello, everyone. Sam Gore along with Cat Whitehill. Cat, not a lot of uh, goal scoring in that opening half. What were your overall thoughts? Well, it wasn't a surprising first half. Both coaches played their style. Virginia loves possession. They like to keep it on the ground. They like to own most of the possession, and Clemson knew that. And they just wanted to make the most of their opportunities when they did get the ball. But they didn't make the most of their opportunities. They didn't score, but still they had the opportunities, and that's what's key for Clemson right now. Uh, let's take a look at some of the highlights. This is one of the early scoring opportunities for Virginia. Yeah, and this is good combination play from, for, from Clemson to get up and down that flank. Flank play is going to be critical for Clemson in the second half. And Sheridan came up with some big stops for Clemson. And Stearns did as well on the other side of the ball. And you can just see that the goalkeeping is so critical for both of these teams because of the attacking prowess of both of, of, of each team. And these are the opportunities that you just can't waste. You have a lot of players inside the box. You have an opportunity to go 1v1, and you decide to shoot it, a Tonda. So it's just, you know, it's tough when, you, when, you know, when you're not finishing everything. And this is the best opportunities for both teams with Peterson taking a shot, Stearns making a big save on the other side. And this was when uh, Clemson slipped on the, the defensive side and Sheridan comes out, but Clemson makes the, the, the final save on the, the end line. 
Here's how they broke down statistically. You see the 10 total shots, but Clemson, two of their three were on goal. And Clemson uh, head coach joining us now. Coach Rodwanski, I uh, want to just ask you what your message was to the team uh, during that break. Well, the first, the first message was, are all the nerves out of our system? Because I thought we started and played with a little bit of nerve, which is understandable. Those things happen. Uh, and uh, we just really just talked about, can we get back to a little bit of our game? Can we connect the ball, make a couple of passes. You know, we've got a, you know, we we were effective with the chances that we've created. We just like to think that we can create a few more of those. Well, Coach, uh, what was your message to the team uh, for the second half? Like, specifically, what are you trying to emphasize to them? Well, we'd like to get the ball wide if possible. But, you know, we, in order to do that, we got to connect our passes. And if we connect our passes, we can find players in wide positions and we'll be able to stretch UVA a little bit. And then, you know, then to look for that ball in behind because we feel that's a threat that we can exploit. All right, Coach. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. So we are, again, scoreless at halftime. We've heard from both coaches. We see the... Well, we're set to begin the second half of our first semifinal here in Cary, the ACC Women's Soccer Championship. This first semifinal beginning at second half, and the second semifinal will come up not before 8 p.m. local time, North Carolina and Florida State. This is Virginia and Clemson. I'm Sam Gore along with Cat Whitehill. Virginia, the number one ranked team in the country. Clemson looking for a major upset here. Well, major, I guess, in the ACC, but in the country, both these teams are in the top 10. Both the teams in the other semifinal are in the top 10. It just shows you how good the ACC conference is. I think a minimum eight teams from the ACC get into the NCAA tournament. Just made a lot of Duke fans happy. It's unusual coming from a Tar Heel. Right. <laughs> that is right. Yeah, um, ACC could get eight teams in. A lot of teams other than these four are sitting on the edge of their seats this weekend waiting to find out. North Carolina and Florida State come up after this in the second semifinal. Well, it's interesting now that the ACC has gone just to a semifinal and final set. A lot of teams that would typically, you know, look to win the ACC tournament aren't necessarily getting opportunities. It's good for to rest legs getting ready for the NCAA tournament. But last year, it hurt some of the ACC teams. They were on the bubble, and they weren't able to get into the tournament and get some extra wins to help their resume. That's knocked out of there by the Clemson keeper, Sheridan. And Sheridan denies it again. Got a hand on that. Sent it over the goal. Virginia shot by number two, Betsy Brenton. Brandon took the shot. Corner kick, Virginia, number eight, Alexis Another Shepard. corner kick for Virginia. Both talk coaches talked about the wide play, and Sheridan punches it out nicely, but right to Brandon. Brandon takes an easy touch. Sheridan does a nice job just get it tipping it over the bar, keeping it, keeping it out of the back of the net. Alexis Shepard. Stearns coming up to scoop that up. Is it to Sonnet? Well, you heard both those coaches, Cal. What do you think those teams seem to do here in the second half? Well, I think wide play is important for, for both sides. You know, their strongest players, the Byworth twins on the outside backs, are so fast and so good at getting forward. And 
and Ratcliffe and Torres are good at, at, at finding those pockets out wide, especially Ratcliffe. She loves to go 1v1 and get in line. Torres likes to send a little bit earlier ball. But the key for the reason, the reason for both of these teams wanting that wide play is because it allows for their their attackers, their forwards, to, to get more open. And you know, Doniak and Ruther were so frustrated because they weren't getting the ball and in tough situations for the defense. And if you get it wide, then the defense gets stretched out a little more, and you can combine around players, and then you find you're attacking players in dangerous spots. Yeah, Johnny really wasn't able to get going at all. <laughs> Foul on Virginia. Foul, Virginia. Let's look at that RPI you were talking about, all the teams that would get in from the ACC. You see uh, Duke, the lowest of these six schools on this list. That's at 14. Well, I mean, it just shows you. Clemson's not even on here. Yeah, I mean, Boston College as well. We'll probably get into the NCAA tournament. And they're not on there. And, you know, it just shows you how difficult playing in the ACC is just by just your everyday schedule and much less out-of-conference schedule. Is conference any uh, different than when you played? I think there's more parity from top to bottom. You know, there was, there's so many more teams that have gotten so much better. I mean, it was still a difficult con conference, but I think that, that, you know, it's just every game you have to be ready to play. I mean, it's very different when it comes to actual teams. Virginia Tech, Miami, Syracuse, and Pittsburgh, they weren't even in my conference. Ratcliffe with the shot. Yeah, that's true. Different teams now. Virginia's I'm that old. Number 11, Radcliffe. <laughs> well, they, and there were different teams than your different teams when I was in school in the ACC. So. Good job from Ratcliffe there to, to go 1v1. The shot just low and an easy save for Sheridan. Bringing it up herself. Find good recovery from Sonnet there. To as soon as she loses it, Clemson could have gotten into transition, but Sonnet didn't give her enough time to collect the ball. No, no whistle. Bodies flying over there in that far corner. No, but it's a, it's a great tackle here from record. You can see if it's Parker. sliding in the last minute. She gets all ball Number from eight, that one. Alexa Sheffer. Sheffer is going to go take the 10th corner kick of the night for Virginia. That happened so fast. As Virginia gets this goal to take the lead. Well, this is that early ball that Torres is so good at. And there's McNabb yep. getting right in front of Sheridan with that one little touch. They were all onside. So it is Virginia who takes the early lead behind the goal of McNabb. Virginia had more shots, and finally one of them getting inside that goal. And the Cavaliers score, but plenty of time left for Clemson to get back in this. And over 37 minutes left in the half. That's that flank play that both to coaches talked about, how important it is for these teams.
See that goal again from a different angle. See, they all did stay on side. When the ball was kicked, McNabb was reading it well. When the ball was kicked, she was on, it appeared. Torres is credited with the assist. Sides on Clemson, it'll be a Virginia throw in. Only the second time they've been caught for offsides. This is gonna be a tough defense to break down because the best defense for Virginia is their possession on the ball. So when we've talked about this a lot, when Clemson wins that ball, they need to be smart with it. They need to keep it a little bit so that their outside backs can get four, they can get numbers into the box. They need to hold the ball well and start getting some more attacking play. They started doing that towards the end of the first half. They haven't done that yet in the second half. They need to, to, to get back into getting those wide players forward and, and holding the ball up front. Another foul called on Virginia. Just over 35 minutes left to play in regulation. Clemson trying to set something up here. Virginia had taken the last eight shots of the game. Clemson just very rarely getting any scoring opportunities, just three total shots tonight. Two of them were on goal, but in the same possession. It's understandable that Clemson staying in the way that they started out this game, you know, it defensively, because they don't want at Virginia to score another goal, but at the same time, they're in a five back, and they are just completely dropping every number behind the ball, and they just have, they, they need to start taking some risks, even though there's still over 30 minutes left, they just, they need to start getting more into the attack, and it's just, right now, Virginia can just play around with the ball and waste time with their passes. Oregon committed the foul there. Schaffer comes over to set things up here for Virginia. scores again. It's McNabb for the second time. I had predicted he was going to have two goals on the day. It would definitely not have been Kristen McNabb. Center back, but I love it. From one center back to another, I love seeing center backs get some goals. But she's just been in the right position, and the marking in the box from Clemson has just been atrocious, which is why she is running completely free on this ball. Not one Clemson player is anywhere near her. She just beats Clemson to the ball and with an easy finish, a perfectly placed ball from Schaffer. Schaffer with the assist, McNabb with the goal. McNabb with both Virginia goals. And Virginia builds a two nothing lead with just over 32 minutes left to play in regulation. Well, now Clemson is definitely going to have to change their tactics. They cannot drop back as much as they have been. They can't stay in that five back. They have to start going for it, taking risks, possibly putting a couple more players up top. And 
Virginia scoring pretty quickly here in the second half. on the ball more, Clemson does. She's so good with the ball at her feet. She can help to create some attacking opportunities. They just haven't found her enough for her to really have a lot of opportunities to be successful. Ton to number 11 for Clemson. Foul on Virginia. Clemson foul. Virginia. should have a little bit of an opportunity here. Seventh foul on Virginia tonight. Cavaliers lead it 2 0 as we approach the final half hour of regulation. Tonda, there she is. Yeah, that was a bit ambitious from a Tonda. When you have that many numbers, four, just put the ball on the ground. Look for, your, for where your players are, your attacking players. You have four players in the 18 yard box. And you settle for a shot that doesn't even really reach the goal. Substitutions coming in for Clemson. Substitutions for Clemson. Entering is number two, Miranda Westlake, replacing number eight, Paige Record. Westlake number is three, coming Zina in. Number three, Shakes, replacing number 11, Katrina Atanda. Number nine, Salma Anastasio, replacing Anastasio number three, Patrice Pasquale. As well as uh, Shakes. Substitutions for Virginia. Entering is number six, Courtney Peterson. And for Virginia, Peterson, seven, who should give them some instant number offense, is coming Lasko, back in, as well as Laxco. Again, in the second half, you can leave the game and then come back in one time. Foul. Clemson. Clemson foul called. And down two nothing. You seen any change, Cat? Well, it's interesting that he took off at Honda. He wants to give her a little bit of a rest so she has some fresher legs toward the end of this game. I've, I've noticed that they put two players to pressure the back line of Virginia just a little bit more because it's just been very easy for Virginia to keep the ball and build out of the attack. It's just that. They're not winning the ball in, in critical situations. They can win the ball higher up the field, and they can start running at Virginia. Virginia is just so disciplined about getting back that Clemson hasn't been able to really build anything in the second half. Florida State, North Carolina, coming up not before 8 p.m. What do you think of that game? Well, they met earlier in the season. Florida State won at 1-0, and Florida State really dominated that game, especially when UNC was in their, their typical 3-4-3. They seemed to play a little bit better in their 4-2-3-1, but... Florida State just really had most of the game. They're they're all they're very similar in style to Virginia with possession oriented and you know it's, I would 
predict Florida State to win, but you just never know in those kind of games. Florida State just seems to have UNC's number. Don't you think North Carolina has a little momentum, though, coming into tonight? They've really come off a, a rough time and come in, uh, I think, on a positive. They definitely have momentum winning. They beat Clemson recently and beat Notre Dame after they had been through a three-game losing streak. No, and Florida State, they're in, they're in a bit of a struggle for them. They lost to Virginia. They tied Virginia Tech, tied Boston College. So, you know, they're, I would say, quote-unquote struggle considering, you know, they, they're playing some of the top teams in the country and they haven't had their international players because of Euro qualifying. Well, now they're getting their international players back. And they, those international players, they make a big difference, especially Megan Campbell, who has one of the best throw-ins I've ever seen. It's better than a corner kick. It's so good. Again, uh, North Carolina, Florida State coming up uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're just coming up on the 7 o'clock hour now. 26 minutes left in regulation here. Virginia leading it 2 nothing. Both goals scored by McNabb here in the second half. This will be the first corner kick of the game for Clemson. Corner kick. Clemson, number 15, Samantha Staub. Staub will take it. That's a dangerous corner kick. Yeah. Stearns seemed to have lost it or she wasn't going after it and you're depending on a smaller player from Virginia to try and head it clear, and there was just no Clemson player running onto it. That far post, it's a dangerous spot. You want to get someone as close to that area as possible if you're Clemson. Another corner kick for Clemson from the opposite side. just missed Morgan Ruther running with a lot of space in front of her and she would have been onside. She's wide open. For Virginia, a dew is coming on. Replacing number 18, Ruther. Ruther. Virginia. It was just wide open Alexis coming Shepard. out of the game. Well, Virginia, and now they can do some a lot of tactical subs. Doniak's not in the game right now. They're taking out Ruther. When you're up 2 0, you want to rest some players for Sunday. Oh, Virginia almost with another. <laughs> Goal. Virginia shot by number two, Betsy Brandon. Yeah, Brandon had a fantastic acrobatic shot there. Virginia shot by number eight, Alexis Shepard. Here's it's a dangerous ball in, and Virginia's a nice job heading it back, and it looks like that was McNabb again trying to get on the end of it. It's not Brandon, it was McNabb. McNabb's uh, everywhere tonight. Yeah, well, it might have been, it's hard to see the numbers. Yeah. McNabb with both goals for Virginia. As you said, uh, not the player we would have picked to have scored the two. Either way, it was a beautiful attempt. <laughs> Kyle 
Cox sends it. Virginia. Oh, foul on Virginia. It's number eight. Clemson looking to get one back. It's better from Clemson. They combine well outside. When they do that, when they find those, when they find those players out wide and they, they do with just a couple one touches, that's where they're the most dangerous. A yellow card on Jenna Weston for Virginia. Weston goes in against Latsko. Yeah, definitely a foul. I don't know about a yellow card on that one. She gets, she gets most, she gets all Alaska, but I don't know. I just, she hasn't been fouling consistently to give an, a yellow that quickly. This referee is calling it tight though. Sides on Virginia. Outside, Virginia. So Coach Steve Swanson. I don't know if he's mad at his team or mad at the refs. Nah, he's mad at the ref because the player that got the uh, actually received the ball wasn't offside. It was the player that was closer to the ball when the ball was played. But a lot of referees think that if you're involved in that way, they call it. They call the offside anyway. Substitution for Clemson entering is number 18. Coming in Jenny is Erickson, uh, Jenny Erickson, and Shannon leaving Horgan. is Shannon Horgan. Also entering for Clemson is number eight, Paige Record, replacing number two. And the record State. coming back in for Clemson. Well, I'm still surprised that Atonda hasn't re entered the match. Atonda yeah, still on the Clemson bench. She's been out for close to 10 minutes now. And the, the attack, except for one little combination play on the outside, has just looked a bit lifeless. now is Virginia is dropping back now that they have that two goal lead so it's giving Clemson more space in the midfield area it's giving them more space on the outside now they have to start to combine a little bit more and find better spots rather than just kicking it and hoping for the best Virginia wanted a foul down there around the goal didn't get the call Clemson down two goals here as so we approach the final 18 minutes of regulation. Big kick. Stop. It's a good look from Stop though. She had time and space to look up, see where Stearns was on her line. It was a rocket of a shot, just was, didn't keep it on frame. all that space and you see it has a good trajectory there and that would have been a difficult one to say from Stearns had she kept it on frame. The 
Virginia looking for a 3-0 lead. They can find the back of the net here. Offsides on Virginia. By about five Offside steps. Virginia. She was just sitting offside. Good job from the Clemson defense to stay up. Yeah, yeah, good step there at the, at the last second from Weston. Clips is still with a chance here. It's another long-range shot from Clemson, and I like the idea of starting to force Virginia to know that they're going to be taking those long-range shots and, and force their defenders to step up. But now that they've done it a couple of times, look for that little slip ball in behind the back line for Anastasio running in, or Tonda now, or Record or Erickson. Look for those runners. See if you can't slot them in into more dangerous positions in their attacking area. There's a Tana with the ball at her feet. What should she do for this offense now? What does it mean for them to have her in there? Well, when she gets on the ball, she can, she can find those slip balls really, really well. She sees the game very well in her attacking midfielder position, combining more, finding Anastasio especially in that target forward position. If she can combine with her and combine with other players out wide, Clemson will start finding more opportunities. They just, you know, now that they're knocking on the door and they're forcing Virginia out a little bit more, Atana just needs to keep getting her foot on the ball. Clemson trying to create something here. That's a good look. I mean, you have all the numbers in there. That's the time when you just cross it without looking because you know that your numbers are in the box and you know you, you just want one of your players to get their head on it, which they did. They just didn't get a good, good enough header. Tonda chasing her. But Clemson pursuing that ball much more aggressively now. Yeah, they really are. They're starting to double team all over the field. They're closing the space a lot quicker. They're starting to have that sense of urgency since there's just a little over 13 minutes left in this game. 2 nothing lead, Virginia. Both goals from McNabb. Clemson foul. Foul, Clemson. That's a record just coming from behind on Torres. Good call from the referee. Byers is a bit lucky so that the ball went out of bounds. Bounds. She could have just let that ball go anyways. Nine, so it didn't touch anyone on that free kick. Abby Jones coming back on for Clemson. Jones Jr. from Auburn, Alabama. And she's another one that'll help a Tonda in that attacking midfielder role. She gets, she's really good at running at players. They need to get her into more 1v1 situations and put Virginia's back four on their heels a bit more. Tunda coming on.
Drops the tunda. There's pressure so much better from Clemson, especially in the midfield. Brandon's been caught with the ball a couple of times, and in the beginning of this game, and for most of the game, Brandon's been able to just keep the ball easily, change the point of attack, really help build the ball out of the back four of Virginia. And now, Atonda and Jones are really starting to, to pressure Brandon a lot more, and it's causing for Clemson to get in better positions on the field to start their attack. Schaffer. I know you said you liked uh, Virginia. To, that was your favorite to win the national championship. But the ACC as a whole, how do you think the ACC is this on the, the national landscape heading in the NCAAs? Virginia shot by number eight. Well, I think minimum, minimum eight teams get in. I could see a ninth slipping in from the ACC just to just so how this conference, how good this conference is. You know, and for a lot of years in the College Cup, it's been ACC dominated. You know, last year you had Florida State and Virginia in the final game. Nobody home, and that is an easy goal for Virginia's Veronica Letzko. Well, this was just a mistake and, and miscommunication both from Staub and Sheridan. Staub thought Sheridan was getting it. Sheridan was nowhere close. She had no idea that Latsko was there. And Latsko is a very fast sub for Virginia who comes in off the bench and brings such a good spark in here. What a big spark for Virginia. So McNabb scores two. Latsko just scored that one. And uh, Sheridan upset with herself back there, but it's 3 nothing Virginia as we've got a little over 10 and a half minutes left to play. Well, and you can see how much Claire Wagner, their center back leader, means this team who's out for the year now with an ACL. You know, they just, they don't seem like themselves. I, I would not have expected this score 3-0 for Virginia. They just, they don't seem as confident in the back and they haven't, you know, been able to hold the ball up front, which is where Weston, who's now playing center back, would have done a nice job. The range from the center backs, one of their best qualities is the center backs set a lot of their play, and they just haven't really been able to do that today. They've just dropped so much, and they basically, except for pockets here and there, have been defending this whole game. Here's a do. Schaffer. But now, you know, in, in these type of situations, Clemson has to remember they're playing the number one team in the country. And they have to just completely forget that this happened and, and just start working on the team chemistry going forward for this for the NCAA tournament. They're still a strong team. They can still do well in the NCAA tournament. They just have to, you know, really regroup, find themselves again, and, and look to the next game. Because they're, without a doubt, we'll get into the tournament. It's quite an accomplishment for Clemson to be here. Yeah, I'm talking to Coach Rodwanski about, you know, the turnaround that Clemson has made. He, he said he just talked to you know, his team about their vision and how his vision for this team was he wanted to be in the top 10, he wanted to be competitive, and he wanted to be in the top four in the ACC in the next two seasons. And he did that. You know, he said that to them, them last year, and he's already yeah. succeeded exactly what he wanted from his vision. So um, he knew when he got the job, he had to have a lot of patience. But now, you know, he's really brought Clemson back and to be one of the top soccer programs in the country. He said that one of the biggest difference was the mentality of this team. And it was just completely different from last year. And that just this team believed and they had so many good leaders. And, you know, it just shows, you know, what, what just a slight mental change can do in helping your, your team and yourself be better. Oh, 
Virginia looking to add one more. Schaffer does. Schaffer with the goal. Well, Schaffer with the goal. The yeah, with a beautiful assist from Doniak on that one. She did basically all the work. You can see her beating a couple of Clemson defenders. And wonderful decision to find a wide open Schaffer at the penalty spot. Doniak is just, she's so good on the ball. She has such great vision. Wow. And you can just see that marking in the box has been the theme of the day for the defense of Clemson. Schaffer's 11th goal this year. That was nice. Especially by Doniak. You're right. What great vision to lay that ball back there. So four nothing Virginia. We just over seven minutes left to play. And we'll see if uh, Virginia starts to rest some more players here. Oh, he absolutely is. He's taking a lot of players out of there, and it's smart. At this point, they've won the game. Except by sheer miracle. They have dominated the second half. Yeah, whatever Coach Swanson said to them at halftime, they listened and they put that, they executed well. But that was a difference for them in the first half. They had opportunities, they just weren't executing. And, to, and now in the second half, they have executed almost to perfection. Doniak gets her left foot on it. Substitutions for Virginia. Entering is number 17, Anna Matson, replacing number seven, Kylie Torres. Also Torres number will go off Christina now. Sullivan, replacing number nine, Mackenzie Doniak. I mean, now it's just a completely different team with all the substitutions. Just over five minutes to play. Virginia's going to move on, barring a miracle to the ACC championship Clemson. game on Sunday. Is that a noon start, Cap? Yeah. When you played, did you like playing early or late? Late. I love the night games. You just have a, a good sense of, you know, it's just fun. It's I like the dark, the, the dark and the under the lights and everything. But when it when it does come to uh, the noon start time, it does have a championship feel to it. National championship is early. ACC championship is early. So you like that, because that means you're in the final. The set piece here for Virginia. Another score. Sullivan makes it five to nothing. Christiana Sullivan, a freshman from Houston, Texas. Well, McNabb sends in an excellent ball, and Westrup gets a little piece of it here, gets a nice cross, and again, Christiana Sullivan just sitting at the six-yard box wide open, and I understand this is a bit of fatigue coming from the defense, Virginia but Cavaliers it, when it comes to marking in the box, 20. a lot of it is focus and knowing where the Virginia players Sullivan. are. Communication from your goalkeeper, communication from your other players. And today, the lack of marking from Clemson has just been the story. They have allowed too many easy goals. Westrup had the assist, Sullivan with the goal. Three players have scored for Virginia. Oh. With 
this kind of score line, Clemson really needs to make a major mental regroup as well. I mean, this is a tough one to overcome. They've just they've competed all season so well, and then to come into the ACC tournament for the first time in a while to show that you know your team is back on the map and then lose by such a score line, that's tough. Coach Redwanski and the coaching staff and the leaders of this team, they have, a, they have a lot ahead of them to help this team get ready for the NCAA tournament. Another chance here for Virginia. In a reminder, coming up at the top of the hour, 8 p.m. in North Carolina and Florida State. The winner will move on to the championship on Sunday to face University of Virginia. The top ranked Cavaliers scoring all five goals here in the second half. Well, the first half was even. That's yeah, what's so really shocking was. to me. That it's 5 0. The first half was, you know, both teams had their opportunities. Clemson, you know, they didn't have most of the possession. They were dropping low, but they're, that's their, that was their game plan. They knew that going in. They're playing smart soccer. You know, the execution wasn't there for either team, but to be 5-0 is, is shocking after that first half. It's just Virginia, they came out a completely different team. Well, you know, Clemson, they just, they almost, they, the, after the first goal, they just looked in utter shock. They didn't know how to recover. Oh, Virginia. So Virginia, does this carry a lot of momentum into the championship, Cat? Yes not only a lot of momentum, but a lot of rest players now, because they've been able to rest them and, you know, had them in too physical of a game. There hasn't been a lot of demands from their defense because of how far back Clem Clem Clemson has dropped. And so, you know, they're, they're able to keep their center backs in the game and, and not feel like they have to rest them because they, they haven't had to defend that much. So to be a well-rested Cavalier team facing either the Tar Heels or the Seminoles on Sunday afternoon at noon. And you have to suspect that that game is going to be quite a battle. It's always a battle. So Virginia can only hope that that game goes into double overtime and, you know, it's just a tough game for both of those teams. One minute, one minute remaining. Final minute of play. And Virginia. Trying to win another national championship. We'll begin by trying to win the ACC championship on Sunday at noon. Cavaliers will be anxiously awaiting the winner of the next game, which will come up at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Final 20 seconds of play. And it has been a tale of two halves here. Virginia absolutely dominating the second half. Scoring Ten, all five nine, goals. Eight, seven, we were tied at six, zero five, at the intermission. Four, three, and Virginia runs two, away with the second half one, to win it five, seven, nothing. Seven, Head coaches congratulating each other. Final score. Coach Radwanski, uh, knowing what an incredible performance it was from Virginia here in the second half. Congratulations to the Virginia Cavaliers. They will advance to the championship match of the 2015 ACC Women's Soccer so, Championship. So, Kat, again, that kind of recap for us uh, where you think Virginia is heading into this championship. Well, they have a lot of confidence. They, they got a lot of people in, to score, a lot of different people to score goals. The encouraging sign is their set pieces were extremely good, especially in the second half. So you had McNabb scoring goals, but you also had a Doniak and Schaffer connection. And they are going to be the key as they keep moving along in these different tournaments. They are two special players. And they were able to, to combine and find each other and, and really interchange well. And Virginia just completely dominated that second half. They, they did well in wide play. They out completely out-possessed Clemson, and they just broke down how Clemson dropped back so far in the second half. So Virginia will move on to the championship and we'll play the winner of the North Carolina Florida State game. That comes up in about 30 minutes from now at 8 Eastern time. 
number two against number three. So for Cat Whitehill, I'm Sam Gore saying so long from Cary, North Carolina, where the final score is Virginia five, Clemson nothing to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watch ESPN.com or watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of